back. You betcha. Right. I am up here in the great state of Oregon. You betcha. And uh, Willamette Valley and Domain Serene. Anyone hear of this brand? Amazing brand. <laughs> uh, started back in the late 80s by the, the fa fabulous um, Evanstadt family. Um, and, you know, there's something about Pinot Noir and Chardonnay and passion. And they go so well together. And, you know, the Evil, Evenstadt family came from, like, Wisconsin, following their love for Burgundy to Oregon and to Willamette yeah. Valley, set up shop kind of across the street from uh, basically Domaine Drouin, if you guys know that uh, brand, uh, <laughs> a great Burgundy brand that came here to Oregon and said, there is a future here, and really made a big uh, splash. And, and the great thing is that, um, Michael Fay, my good friend who I've known for, you know, more than a decade, he and I got to know each other down in, um, California in yeah. Anderson Valley, even yeah. though we kind of did know each other through, uh, things that were happening in the central coast where you were down there working yeah. with the Cambria brand and other things. Here you are, you've been here since 2017, the winemaker, um, vice president of winemaking, um, really having some fun here and yeah. we want to tell you about some of the fun wines that you've been working on and so obviously I, I stuck this one in your face real quick uh, <laughs> because that's how you start with bubbles of yeah. course yeah and um, this is a great little program yeah it's one of our, our youngest programs too you know we just started it in 2014 I know that doesn't seem that young but uh, um, we, we've taken the decision to do a long time in garage um, on its yeast to, yeah. to build complexity in the wine and for our multi vintage and then our vintage uh, sparkling wines will be even longer. So yeah. we started it in 14 and we're only on our third release right now. And so the multi vintage three is what we're trying. Yeah. It's uh, all done up here in the Dundee Hills, yeah. all high elevation, Jory soils, yeah. um, uh, Dijon clones of Chardonnay, and then a mixture of clones of Pinot Noir. And that's about where we're at right now, is about 800 feet, somewhere yeah. around 800 yeah. feet. Yeah. So we're, we're looking down above the Dundee, little town of Dundee is down there. Um, like I said, Domaine Drouin is right um, next to us here across the street. And then we also have another good brand like Archery Summit, which is right down there. And then you've got Sokol Blouser, another amazing one, especially as far as the history of this area goes. And you're surrounded by it, but you know, here we are, we're on a good amount of your estate property right here. Right, yeah, I mean, we're on our Winery Hill property, which is where our clubhouse, which is our tasting room and where the winery is. Yeah. And um, we now have a new white winery that we just built a few years ago so that we can keep um, programs like sparkling and, and Chardonnay separate from our Pinot Noir production. But all of the vineyards for all three of the wines that we've been trying today, all come within a mile from here. And Amazing. they're all, uh, um, they're all Dundee Hills, obviously, um, but they all share that same three things is it's, it's high elevation, it's deep jewelry soils. Yeah. And when it comes to Chardonnay, um, we only plant, uh, uh, Dijon clones cause we know we can get them ripe every year. Yeah. Um, for Pinot Noir, we have a little bit more license where we can use some different, you know, Pomard, Vadensville, um, and then of course the Dijon clones as well, yeah. but we, we have a little bit more license. Yeah. Um, but we found in the, in the 1990s and we we found yeah. through a lot of other people's experimentation and stuff as well here that these Dijon clones are kind of the key to, yeah. to producing great Chardonnay yeah. in, in the Dundee Hills on high elevation. Yeah, it's really, there's really some interesting things happening here. And I, I really think that you're such a great person to kind of have the background in California and then come up here. This is different up here, isn't it? It's different in a lot of ways, <laughs> you know, um, and in a lot of great ways. I yeah. mean, I lived in the Pacific Northwest, um, for years. Yeah, you were I a little first, Seattle like, guy. Yeah, 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 I was a Seattleite for a while. I went to <laughs> University of Washington before I came down to Cal Poly, yeah. San Luis Obispo, but um, love the Pacific Northwest, love the 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 vibe here. Um, love yeah. the wines here. I mean, I was a I was a I was a server in a restaurant in Seattle and the first wine I fell in love with was a Panther Creek wine from oh. uh, 1993 vintage. And I was just like head over heels and I was like, how do I learn how to grow and make that? At the time I felt like I was learning how to grow and sell paper. Yeah. I was in forestry management. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, how do I learn how to grow and sell wine? And uh, moved Look down at to him California. Now. Look at him now, you and, guys. Um, and, and have only really made Pinot Noir and Chardonnay my whole career. Um, just from that taste. And he's really good at it, so. Um, it's the only thing I know how to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
brother. <laughs> um, you know, just, you know, here we are. Um, we're in a very, very famous area of Willamette Valley. This is kind of where it all kind of started, where, yeah. you know, David Lett came here, planted these grapes um, originally back in the mid-60s, 1966, at, uh, down Corvallis, and then started purchase his own property, which is right down the road. Yeah, and we'll yeah. talk about that because of the Pinot, because that's yeah. kind of near some of that property right there. But, you know, we, we get into what grows great here. We know Pinot Noir is like, everyone goes, oh, Willamette Valley, Pinot Noir. Pinot Gris, obviously very good. Um, you know, we got to say that um, Oregon basically put Pinot Gris on the, the map, and we give a lot of credit to King Estate, too. I mean, yeah, they, sure. got, they produced a lot, and people fell in love with it yeah um, Chardonnay a little bit different you know yeah. and we're looking at a white wine here and guess what you guys it's not Chardonnay yeah uh, no, we're talking a lot about Chardonnay <laughs> and we're literally not tasting Chardonnay right not now. tasting <laughs> Chardonnay right now but <laughs> believe me it's good and it, it is good when you I mean in sparkling forms and yeah you do have a Blanc de Blanc yeah we, wine. yeah we just released it actually two yeah. weeks ago yeah. so um, yeah it's a 2014 it's a vintage Blanc de Blanc yeah so going on that scale, so you look at this, you know, oh, Chris has got some Pinot Gris or some, <laughs> some um, definitely, that's, that's definitely some Pinot Gris or, or some, um, Maybe some, Pinot some Char or Chardonnay, something, something yeah. like that. But guess what? It's not. Um, this is one of the great uh, things, you know, there's a lot of contributions that Domaine um, Serene has made to bringing attention to Willamette Valley. One of them is a, a great one, and that's the uh, Cour Blanc, um, so White Heart. Um, uh, and this is actually Pinot Noir. Yeah. It's just, you know, you take it off the skins, you get the flavors. Tell everyone a little bit about this program, because you like making this wine. I love this. And this <laughs> wine was a wine that, before I came to Domaine Serene, yeah. I really remember from my first tasting here. Yeah. Um, and, and just... It's just it's a magical wine yeah. because it's um, it's we're taking just the smallest most delicate portion of the press yeah. of 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 older you yeah. know thirty year old Pinot Noir Pomard vines that are own rooted pressing them super gently um, barrel fermenting a uh, touch of new oak um, long aging um, lots of batonage a lot of stirring mm. of this. But it's really a wine to me that if you ever have an essence of any kind of purple, whether yeah. that's like lavender, raspberry, anything, then you really kind of hit the mark because you yeah. usually only get that from the skins of yeah. Pinot Noir and we're so pressing so gently, we don't get very much yeah. from it. So it's kind of like this walking this balance to try yeah. to get a tiny essence of it. Um, but the truly great ones, um, including the one that we're having right now, which is from the 19 vintage, they come from the coolest vintages. Yeah. Um, this wine will be in cooler vintages. It'll age really, really well. Um, in warmer vintages, it'll be really, really great, really accessible for yeah. the first, um, you know, when we first release it. Um, but when it's a cool vintage, it's kind of like it's kind of like Chardonnay in that yeah. aspect is in those cooler vintages, yeah. those wines. Can sometimes be a little um, a little tight in the beginning. For ours, not so much because it's under cork for a year before yep. we release it. But it really evolves over time. I just think it's a super fun wine to make. Making a white wine um, that truly looks like a white wine from a a, a, a deeply purple grape because yeah. there it's ripe Pinot Noir. We're not picking it like a sparkling yeah. pick. It's it's ripe Pinot Noir made as a white wine. So That's it's very interesting incredible. point. So what you just said there too, if you've seen some of the things I've done on sparkling wines with uh, Domaine uh, Carneros and all these other yeah. ones, when you when you pick the the grapes for the sparkling wines, you got, they're actually the first grapes that are picked every year, and it's because you really want the high acid. And you want fruit flavors, but you're going to drop sugar in there anyways, and yeast, and that's how you're going to make this thing happen and how it's going to yeah. uh, ferment a second time inside the bottle. You also need to have yeah. that lower, um, the lower sugar because yeah. every single bottle of sparkling wine is its own fermentation. Exactly. And so if you have higher sugar, that means you have higher alcohol and yeah. trying to have a fermentation inside of a bottle at higher alcohol, exactly. impossible. Point well taken, point yeah. well taken, you guys. So little lessons here, little lessons here <laughs> our best. Um, you know, Pinot Noir, we get into the subject here, and, and obviously you work with Pinot Noir um, in Anderson Valley and the Central Coast. Yeah. 
some amazing stuff down there. It's different here, isn't it? It's really different yeah. here. It's really um, what I found in Oregon, and I think this is actually true um, everywhere in the world, um, but I, it really kind of made its point more clear to me in Oregon is that um, Pinot Noir, um, the shape and the style of Pinot Noir is highly dependent on soil aspect and elevation. I think when I was in California, you can plant on north facing slopes and you can plant on higher elevation and, and you can get it, you can get it ripe in yeah. almost every year because of the abundance of sun that's there. Yeah. Um, in Oregon, we, we do have um, a great amount of sun from June until uh, hopefully till the day after harvest, <laughs> but, but, um, but it's not, it, it, it's not as intense right. and it's and, and especially during the the actual from parades on to to harvest it's it's much cooler yeah. and so um, what where I was going with that is that you know these these the the importance of whether you're on jewelry soils yeah. or sedimentary soils here in the Willamette Valley really creates the sense of shape yeah. of, a, of a wine and 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 flavor profiles uh, elevation has um, a, a huge impact because the higher elevation is generally longer hang time. Longer hang time usually gives you more tertiary characters, yeah. flavors, and things like that. And then aspect truly is probably the biggest indicator of shape of the wine. Yeah. So whether it's like west facing and that wine's going to be very vertical on the palate, yeah. Yeah. muscular, structured, um, southern facing slopes generally have wines that are very like lush and plush yep. and southeast facing or east facing are somewhere in the middle but tend to have just really excellent textural elements yep. and um i really found when i came to to the dundee hills and, and to domain serene and, and and the willamette valley that um those are the three things that are the most important and and i think i probably would have found that out um uh earlier if i would have started yep. my career in oregon yeah <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. And it's not to say that you don't have those things in California, yeah. but you know, the other thing too is I gained more experience yeah. obviously on my way up here to Oregon. So those yeah. things you you just kind of you pick up things as you go. Yeah. And then but when I got here I was like, for example, this wine that we have here, two thousand eighteen aspect from Aspect. aspect. Once again, I was just gonna hammer this over. Yeah. You hear him say aspect a few times. Yeah. This wine is called aspect. Yeah, really get this in here. So what are, what are the sources of this? Because they're from very special little blocks, aren't they? Oh, these are the best vineyards that we own. I mean, we <laughs> have, um, we made this wine um, starting in 2014 as well. Um, it's from the, it's anchored by our Grace Vineyard, Coat Sued Vineyard, and Mark Radford Vineyards. Those are all about a mile away from, uh, from, the, from the winery as the crow flies. It's on our Evanstad Estate, yeah. which is um, seven single vineyards on one piece of property. Right. The whole idea behind this wine, um, those made excellent single vineyard wines. And then we made a wine that was called Monogram as well from those same three vineyards. Monogram. Um, the Monogram is a, is a um, <laughs> very intense, um, rich, full body, concentrated. Um, Give me a steak. Yeah, let's, style let's of talk, Pinot yeah. Noir. It, it carries the Monogram of Ken Evanstad, our, own, our, our founder. Yeah. And, and, and it's in the style of Pinot Noir that he likes. But we wanted to create a wine that was um, that took the textural and and shape and 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 beauty of these different parcels yep. and put them together to create something unique and special and compelling. And so we took um, the Mark Bradford vineyards on a west facing slope, and that west facing slope um, are our latest ripening yep. vineyards. That's because, basically do that way, you guys. Yeah. That's do west is right there. That's south, okay. So that's east and that's definitely north that way. Yeah, so we're so when we when we're talking about west facing slopes, what I think is really interesting about them is in Oregon, you, the west the side on the the west side of any vine is going to see the most amount of sunlight because we have um, sun is out until 9:30 at night, you know, in 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 the ripening months here in Oregon because yeah. we're so far north. Yeah, it's a very interesting little aspect did I say aspect yeah, again? It's like, I did. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if you really think about this, what makes Oregon work up here? You know, you think like, geez, you know, you're kind of up here. It's colder the more you go. Like you go to Alaska, that's up there north, just past Washington. And we really are right on the Columbia River. Columbia River is only like, you know, 30 miles that way. Yeah. Even that. Yeah. It's right there. And the Willamette's and, even and, closer. And the Willamette's right over here. 
And so we are in a cool zone and, and the, the coastline is about 40 miles that way. Yeah. It's like really not, that's where Tillamook cheese comes from right out there, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, I think that what's really interesting about this, uh, some people don't know this about Oregon and Washington. Let's give yeah. Washington wall. Sure. It's the later part of the year, especially the fall, yeah. the sun stays up there longer and so the the warm the warmth is there but the light and what's happening with photosynthesis yeah. is going way past what we get in california and it's an advantage to you guys and you really need it up yeah there we because do. they have a very short season versus california yeah i mean you and i were talking about it yeah sometimes you come up here and you you're like oh oh my god there's there's no bloom this doesn't even these little buds haven't even popped out yeah. yet and it's may you know, like California, it's like a month and a half into, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. But you make up for it there, and yeah. it's really a critical time, and it really brings out the flavors in these ones. It really does, because you have sunlight without heat. Yeah. Right? So you get this, yeah. like, great amount, like you were saying, photosynthesis, light, you yeah. know. Um, and then also because, like, anything that's planted on a west-facing slope, we leave the leaves protecting it because it's it would be getting that yeah. direct sunlight. But because you know there's only a small portion of that vine that's getting the eastern morning sun on there these are the vines from our mark radford vineyard specifically that come in the last for us in any vintage yeah. so that wine always has because it's it's on the vine for so long um it does get you know it does get dappled sunlight through those leaves of course so it has a little bit thicker skins it's more muscular it's like a, a more muscular structured style of wine um so we're trying to take that um component and then we're blending it with our grace vineyard which is to me the most um amazing vineyard that i've ever worked with in it's my named life named after one of the founders of course it's yeah awesome. and actually yeah. the mark bradford vineyard is yeah. named after their son yeah so it was the first vineyard we planted our own in 1993 they named that after the after their son yeah. uh domain serene serene is their daughter uh -huh. and then grace vineyard was planted in 1996 we we made monogram because Ken said there should never be a Ken's Vineyard. Yeah, <laughs> he wasn't as he wasn't into that one. So, but Grace Vineyard's on a, a southeast yeah. facing slope, so it gets a lot of sun. It's Dijon clones six six seven and triple seven. That's great. So it's super early ripening, but to me that wine always has this ethereal quality. And whenever it has fruit, it's like the most fresh fruit you've ever had off a vine. So if it's like raspberry, it's like a raspberry that you just plucked off the vine. Put in your mouth yeah. and then to me it's a struck a textural wine i always say it's like suede yeah it's smooth Ooh. like velvet but firm like leather you know like some things are just soft and supple this has plenty of 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 weight behind it so it it's, does. it's like suede it is like and suede. it really brings that to this bottle it, it is a smooth wine it is rich naturally rich i mean there's a lot of flavor a lot of black fruits especially the plum cherry yeah uh, but it's got some blackberry in there too yeah and it's like the bristly little creek that we just walked down to there and yeah. we found those blackberries and we're popping them in the mouth yeah there's a freshness <laughs> about this wine too yeah it's a very good i think you've used the oak extremely well because it's not really a super omnipresence yeah. here no it just is kind of complementing it with some spices on the side but it's really about the fruit and the how yeah. you can ripen these and these kinds of different aspects <laughs> yeah again uh, of how it's looking at the sun and the age of the vines, yeah. the clones that you're using. Yeah. There's so much stuff going on in this glass. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Yeah. There's like a ton of stuff going on in here. And how many Pinots do you make overall? Oh, well, <laughs> this last is year at Domain Serene, we made 34 wines. Um, at least half of those are Pinot Noir. Yeah. Um, yeah, single vineyards mostly, a few cuvées, this being one of them, Monogram being another. Um, we make a few special cuvées and then like salute wines and things yeah. like that for, yeah, for auction yeah. wines. Um, the third component of this wine to me is maybe one of the most interesting places we have too, the Cote Sud Vineyard. Yeah. Um, the thing that makes this vineyard special to me is the, the, um, the shape of Chardonnay or Pinot Noir is the exact same. Wow. So like it's planted next to each other, but you, it feels like a giant sphere inside of your mouth, yeah. whether it's Chardonnay or Pinot. And I think that Pinot brings that to this because this is a very mouth filling yeah. or uh, mouth coating yeah. wine with all those kind of textural elements, their structure. Um, like you said, with the oak, I don't know. I think oak is like, it's kind of like looking at um, a piece of art, right? And um, 
the 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 painting yeah. is the wine yeah and the oak is the frame yeah right and the frame's important because that's what provides structure yeah. and ageability yeah. of uh, for a painting or for a piece of art but in the end nobody comes into the Louvre to look at the the, the frame of the Mona Lisa no. they don't. <laughs> you know they actually don't. It's, so oak's important for sure absolutely having the right amount of oak but you know the, the the amount of fruit the textural elements yeah. the concentration that we can get in the dundee hills yeah. that's what truly makes yeah. the wine yeah i mean this is amazing wine i mean I, I think this is a great example just these three wines i mean obviously 30 wines that they make here um this is a very special example of the red obviously we've got the sparkling wine that's a big deal that's a new yeah. deal here yeah all of it's Watch done in-house. All, all in-house. Yeah. yeah, and actually you have your own like... Uh, disgorging you know, line. Disgorging, yeah. all that stuff. So that means they can really make this here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously, one of my favorite white wines yeah. in America. Yeah. Oh, thank right you. <laughs> you know, here, here to that. Cheers. But, hey, thanks once again for joining in, you guys. And uh, please look them up. I mean, Domain Serene, very easy to find on the internet. Yeah. Um, and look up these great things. Look up his bio, too. You also, uh, let me just say this, too. You also won a pretty good award last year. Oh, gosh. You, you won a lot of, their, their uh, breakdown in the wine enthusiast, you got over 20, I think, of those wines were 92 and above. I mean, yeah. it's like insanely good. I mean, I'm not the only one that thinks so. We all do. I mean, that's why this winery has become a, a great emblem of what Willamette Valley is and really where we're going. I mean, that's what wonderful thing to have Michael here and who's going into different directions that they weren't there before. And the grapes are, and this is one great thing about wonderful wines of Burgundy and it has something to do with here. The age of the vines matter. Yeah. Maturity matters. Sure does. They're going to give you flavors that you never had before. And this is a great winery to really explore that with. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little show. And Michael, it's so good to see you here. Let's do, do my white because yeah. I like my white a lot. There you go. Definitely. Cheers. Cheers. Definitely. All right. All right Here's brother. to a new year. Indeed.